Hi folks, uh, my name is John Chambers and I'm in the process of setting up a podcast. It's a new venture and I'm kind of learning on the go here. I'm not sure how it will develop or if it will develop at all. <laughs> uh, that depends on how much I enjoy doing it and uh, if I get any anyone else interested in it, obviously. I don't want to talk to myself, do I? <laughs> Wouldn't be the first time, mind you. Having said that, I mean, the purpose of the pod is um, just to share some stories and memories from my childhood. Childhood, my crazy childhood. As for those that don't know me, I was born and bred in Lourdes, Belfast and brought up during the worst years of the Troubles. And um, I've, I've written a book about my experience called The Belfast Child. Uh, and basically the theme of the book is just telling what life is like through the eyes of a child growing up in that environment and the trials and tribulations that we all suffered and also the search for my missing Catholic mother. I'd been told was uh, dead when I was a child. It's only much later that I learned that she was actually alive. I've probably given too much of my story away already. <laughs> I, I mean, despite the subject matter, the book, although it does deal with the troubles and a lot of the major events that happened through the troubles, it also deals with some of my crazy adventures and situations I got myself involved in uh, along the way. Anyway, there were lots of stories that I couldn't actually fit into the first book. I was restricted to, I think it was 78,000 words. So there was quite a few stories that didn't get put in the book that I, I would have liked to have been in there. This is one of those stories. It, it actually involves me, my, my younger brother David, a haircut, my wee granny chambers, and a 78-year-old, half-blind, half-deaf Jewish barber, uh, should I say, retired Jewish barber from Silver Stream, which was just, well, it was actually uh, Dali Cell, and it was, we, we used to walk over Harmony to get our hair cut by him. At the time, I was living in Glencairn, and because my dad was working here and there, my mum had disappeared. My wee granny Chambers, she played a, a pivotal role in looking after us. Um, she was like a mother to me and my three siblings. Uh, I mean, back then, we were living in a council state, you know, and um, life was hard, not just for us, but, you know, with kids all over Northern Ireland, especially in Belfast, the ghettos of Belfast and London, down, you know. Poverty was rift and despair, and um, not, families didn't have a lot of money, you know, and there wasn't a lot of work at the time. So a lot of people suffered. I, I made my wee granny's life a living nightmare. I, I drove over uh, to distraction, so I did. I was forever in trouble, even though I was a little Christian boy, and I went to church and prayed every night. There was a little demon inside me that just was uh, restless all the time. You <laughs> could never settle unless I was causing some mischief or, or mayhem. I mean, this particular incident happened around I think it was like 75, 74. My dad was still alive at the time, and I was about eight or nine, so I was. It, this kind of happened on the tales of uh, two, two recent shameful events in my life. Firstly, I'd been caught shoplifting in the local VG. The, the local Reverend, Reverend Lewis, he was very, very heavily involved in the local community. I got caught shoplifting. He was sent for, and when he came over, I, I saw my heart out, and <laughs> I didn't know what to tell him. He said, I can't believe this, John Chambers, you shoplifting. Don't you, don't you listen to anything that we tell you in Sunday school? Uh, I was ashamed of myself and he said, why are you doing it? And I, I turned around and I said, because I'm hungry. And he looked at me and uh, I could see pity flicker across his eyes, <laughs> his eyebrows. And then he, he kind of looked at me a little harder and said, so you're saying your granny's not feeding you? And um, I said, no, she's not. There's no food in the house. But the minute I said it, I, I, I thought, fuck me, I know what's going to happen now. And right and off, he uh, said, well, I think we better take a walk up the road and visit your granny, don't you? And uh, it was the longest walk of my life, uh, up from the spar up, up to my granny's house at the top of Glencar and in the close. And needless to say, when uh, he brought me home and um, he, he told her uh, that I was stealing food because I was hungry and starving and there was no food in the house. I, uh, well, put it this way, the minute he left, I got kicked all around the room. <laughs> Uh, I mean, my granny, her generation, you know, not kicked, I mean, slapped around the room. Her generation, you know, they were formidable Belfast women, but they grew up in hard times and um, they had uh, an old fashioned attitude towards discipline and uh, she'd give you a, a, a clip around the ear if, if you were bad or uh, misbehaving, uh, which unfortunately for her, I was all the time. I was never ever out of trouble. Um, another time I'd. Uh, in school, we used to get tickets. Uh, if if you were uh, if you got free dinners, you got a blue ticket, 
and for those families that paid, uh, they got a green ticket. And we used to have to queue up outside the office every day and get the tickets before, before dinner. But one day, uh, I, was, I, 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 I had to deliver something to the office or something, and whilst I was doing it, I was in the office and the receptionist, uh, or secretary, she was handing out the tickets. You know, you've got dozens of screaming, yelling kids uh, uh, hanging in the window while she's handing out the tickets. I, 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 I glanced over and I seen a pile of green dinner tickets on the side. I thought, God, I'm not going to miss this opportunity. So I slipped them into my pocket, so I did. And I thought I, thought, I, thought I got played away with it. But as I was walking, uh, turning to leave the room, she grabbed me by the collar and said, what do you think you're doing? And I'm like, what? <laughs> what do you mean? And she goes, them tickets in your pocket. And she caught me red-handed and I was, I was mortified. Um, but it was only afterwards that I found out she was actually uh, a part-time police officer. <laughs> and she took crime and punishment very seriously. And obviously she could see through a chancellor like me. So um, I was marched to the headmaster's office. I can't remember his name, but he was a right old bastard, so he was. And back then, we used to get uh, uh, parties properly in school. It was either the cane, the slipper, or a belt. And normally, he would have given me the belt or the slipper, but I don't know, maybe maybe he was busy that day and he didn't have time. I think he actually enjoyed beating kids up with fucking belts and slippers, but that's another story. And anyway, um, yeah, so uh, I, I got detention and I was sent home with a letter to deliver <laughs> a letter to give them a granny chambers. Uh, explaining the uh, sorry episode in great detail and um, yeah I think I was grounded for a week after that <laughs> uh, but that was some of the more innocent situations I got myself involved in um, but uh, back to the haircut yeah I mean money was tight and granny used to send us down the Woodfield to get our haircut there was one just down from the park near the VG I can't remember what you called it but I, my dad used to bring me down there too, and uh, I used to love it. And the guys were all really friendly and that. And uh, I always got short back and sides, typical haircut of the day for kids, you know what I mean? I remember uh, I used to love going down with my dad because we'd always go to the bakery um, down there, and then he'd take me into Woodville Park uh, if it was a summer's day. I always remember one year uh, uh, Mickey Marley's roundabout was in the park and uh, had a ride on it. He was a grumpy old bastard then. But I always, you know, get, you get vivid memories. It's like a photograph in my mind, you know, walking towards the park and holding my dad's hand and then seeing Mickey Marley. Um, but what actually happened, um, my granny had this old friend called Isaac. Um, he lived over uh, in Silverstream and um, he'd retired. I think he'd been in hospital or something. I mean, my granny and him had been uh, friends forever, so they had. Uh, but whatever happened, he, he decided to make himself available uh, for cutting hairs again. And while the shops on the Shankle were probably charging four or five quid back then, he was only charged like 50p. Needless to say, my granny thought, I'll have some of this, you know, I'll save some money. I'll send him over to Harmony to get the hair cut, and Isaac can do it. This old boy, honest to God, he was about 78, was half blind, he was deaf, and, and he smelled, but that's, a, that's another matter. Uh, but he was very enthusiastic and we started going over to get our hair cut. Uh, unfortunately, enthusiasm uh, didn't equate to uh, anything respectable and uh, we looked like uh, freaking plucked chickens by the time he finished with us half the time. Um, you know, we'd cut your hair and he'd put the scissors down and he'd forget where the scissors were and you'd have to help him find the scissors and all that. Um, but then anyway, one day we went over and he wasn't there. There was a sweet shop right near where he lived and I had this money for his haircut, burning a hole in my pocket and I didn't have any other money and I used to love the cooler cubes and the peanuts, you know them hard peanut ones and they had these sweets and they were in the window and they were calling me. So I said to David, I know what we'll do, I'll cut your hair, you cut my hair and I'll keep the money. So he thought, what brilliant idea of that, you know what I mean? So we sneaked home, got a pair of scissors, went into the park and cut each other's hair. Then we got home, he wouldn't have seen this, we were like plucked chickens, it was a mess. But the thing is, my granny, Isaac was that bad at barbers that my granny couldn't tell the difference, you know what I mean? So he, she's just, oh, your hair's lovely, uh, come and have your dinner, this and the other. I was like, yes, got away with it, got a new money stream. And from then on, uh, whenever she uh, sent us over to Isaac's, uh, we'd walk over Harmony <laughs> and got head, head straight for the sweet shop. And then after that, we'd go into the park and cut each other's hair and head home. <laughs> and that went well for quite a few months. 
and then one day um, we, we, we went in the park, had loads of sweets and all that. Uh, Granny and Santa's over to get our hair cut. I mean, I got home and it was supper time, so we were all sat down having our dinner. Well, Granny just got a phone uh, back then and um, she was funny on the phone. You thought she was just speaking to the person in front of her. She just couldn't get her head around it. But anyway, we were all sat down having our dinner and uh, the phone rang and my granny went out and she was on the phone for ages. And then I'm thinking, oh, well, that's weird. There's a lot of whispering, this, that, and the other going on. And then she came back and sat on the table and she looked at me and she goes, do you know who that was? And I says, no. And she goes, that was Isaac's wife. And I went, oh, what did she want? And she goes, oh, she just wanted to tell me he died last night. Fuck you now. There's me caught red handed again, sent to my room, and once again, I'm in the doghouse. <laughs> well, that's it, my first pod. Um, please be gentle with me. It's a learning curve for me, and uh, uh, I've got the first one out of the way. It's not great. Uh, it might be the last one. <laughs> it depends on how it goes. But uh, thanks for listening, and uh, don't forget to subscribe, share, and like. Take care. Thank you. Bye.